Praise the Lord. I am redeemed. And Jesus has loosed the chains of sin. And I am redeemed. Say that now, say it aloud. And every yoke and every chain of sin, of Satan, of suffering and sickness, the Lord will break out of your life in Jesus' name. Your song, your testimony, your confession every time, every day is that I am redeemed for active service, for higher service, for profitable service. He has renewed, he has redeemed us. It will be so in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this workers retreat. Thank you for the way you have been present mightily in our midst. And thank you for the love you have shown to us and for reminding us that your affection, your love, your redemption will never stop in any of our lives in Jesus' name. There is a period, there is a time of active service before us. And every one of us without exception, after this workers retreat, you put us into profitable, progressive, active service in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. And no one will lose their reward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. We are coming to Exodus chapter 12. I will read him from verse 5. Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. Here the Lord was talking about the redemption of the children of Israel. Israel out of captivity. Israel out of slavery. Israel out of Egypt. Israel out of the evil world. And it's a picture of the church. It's a picture of the people of God even today. Out of sin, out of darkness, out of evil, out of the oppression and the slavery and the domination of the evil one. And it's the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, our redemption, our redeemer, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away, that comes to set us free, comes to set you free and liberate you and take you out of where you have been to the glorious redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12. It says in verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. For them it was a night of judgment. The future night of judgment of reckoning is coming. And the Lord is saying, when that future night of judgment, that future night of recompense comes for the world, the people who have been saved, the people who have been delivered, and the people who have been rescued, taken out of the captivity of the evil one, we will go with the Lord. We are not going to remain in this evil war forever and ever. When that night comes, the Lord will take all his people out of this place and up above you and I. We're going to be with the triumphant conquering saints in Jesus' name. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, And the blood, the blood of the Lamb, and the blood, the blood of 
the Paschal lamb, the blood, the blood of the Lord Jesus for our own sake and for us today, the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, somebody read that with me, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You didn't say that one aloud. I will pass over you. And the plague of judgment shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. We're looking at the picture of Christ's unlimited redemption. The Lord has come and the Lord has paid the price. He's been sacrificed for us on the cross of Calvary. He has given us redemption. He has provided redemption for us. And it's an unlimited redemption. And what we're looking at with the children of Israel is the picture, the pattern, the provision of Christ's unlimited redemption. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purpose and plan of a full redemption. He did it for them that he might show that this is what he's going to do for us. The purpose and the plan of our full redemption. Number two, the, the purchase and purging through his free redemption. And you'll understand, you notice that the children of Israel did not have to pay any money. It's not by gold, it's not by silver, it's not by the work of our hand. It's not by the activities of religion, but by the redemption of the Redeemer. That's why it says we're purchased and we're purged through his free redemption. Number three, the promise and pursuit of a final redemption. Let's go to number one, the purpose and plan of a full redemption. Look at First Peter chapter 1. We're looking at verse 18. It says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with silver, or with uh, corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. In verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, without spot. Then in verse 20 it says, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Stop right there and think through. He was ordained, foreordained to be the lamb, to be the redeemer. He was foreordained to pay the price of our redemption before the foundation of the world. Before Adam and Eve fell, the Lord knew ahead of time the fall was going to come. He, the Christ, he, the Redeemer, was foreordained before the foundation of the world, before the calling of Abraham. And before Isaac and Jacob, and before the twelve fathers, before they settled in the land of Egypt, and before the night that the Paschal Lamb was slain, Christ verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Before Christ came, Matthew chapter 1. For thou shalt bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Before that time, from the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, he was foreordained. That's in the first Peter now, chapter 1, and in verse 20, he was foreordained that he will be the, the redeemer. But it was now manifest in these last times. 
that shows us that what we're reading about in Exodus is just a picture of what was to come. And now there are three things we're looking at here of the purpose and the plan of our full redemption. Number one, the pre-commitment to our full redemption, all-inclusive redemption, the pre-commitment of the Heavenly Father, of the God of heaven to our full, all-inclusive redemption. Number two, the price for our full all embracing redemption the price that was paid and is paid already and it is yours already number three the purpose of a full all-round redemption the pre-commitment the price and the purpose let's look at number one number one the pre-commitment to our full all-inclusive redemption the redemption we're talking about is not a limited redemption it's not a modified redemption it's not an uh, you know a divided redemption is full is complete is all all inclusive for your spirit for your soul for your body from the time you are born again until the time you see him face to face it's an all-inclusive redemption and the lord had already pre-committed himself into that look at genesis chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 15 and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel please uh, wait a moment this is the picture of calvary when christ will come and he the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent of the devil and it says and thou shalt bruise his heel that's talking about crucifixion but you know there are people who are saved who are redeemed the children of god and they do not follow all the various steps from genesis chapter 3 to isaiah chapter 53 and to matthew chapter 20 uh, chapter 27 crucifixion chapter and then to first peter chapter 2 verse 24 they do not follow the line of history and anytime they pray they pray as if satan is still all powerful they pray as if calvary has not taken place they pray as if the head of the serpent has not been bruised but you understand the lord has committed himself to this and he says i will put enmity between thee and the woman between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head now when the head of the serpent is bruised, shattered, clubbed, destroyed, that serpent is not as powerful as he was when the head had not been bruised. You know, the head of Satan, the power of Satan, and the very poison of Satan has been nullified for you for me because the feet of the son of god the seed of the woman has now been bruised and he was crucified from that point of crucifixion onwards there's total victory for you that's what we read about in first peter chapter 1 verses 18 to 20 now we're coming to first timothy chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 9 first timothy chapter 1 second timothy chapter 1 we're reading from verse 9 he's still telling us about the pre-commitment of the almighty god to a full all, -in all inclusive redemption who has saved us is not each 
is paid the price and called us with an holy calling not according to our works we're not going to start it all over again fighting the devil crushing the devil it's not according to our works we're not going to start again searching for what is that satan what is that serpent we're going to do everything we can to bruise he said it's been done and so now it's not according to our own works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began before the world began that means Calvary is not an afterthought he had been planned before the world began and what we read about in the new testament is the manifestation and the fulfillment of what had been ordained and decided before the world began look at titus chapter 2 and we're, chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 2 titus chapter 1 Titus chapter 1 verse 2 it says in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie say our God cannot lie my God cannot lie in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie look at this look at this promised tell me tell me out aloud promise before the world began and so you understand god from all eternity he had known when was creating man even before he created man that the fall will happen he knew that redemption will have to be put in place he knew that christ his only begotten son will have to come and when he comes he will reverse everything that satan and adam and eve and all those generations of corrupted people everything they did that when christ comes is going to reverse everything he did that he planned that he purposed that before the world began it's going to be fulfilled in your life look at verse 3 in verse 3 he says but as in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of god as savior let's look at number two number two there is talking about the price of a full all embracing redemption the price that christ will have to pay because the pascal lamb was sacrificed and the pascal lamb was given so that so that the price the full price is not it wasn't paying each installmentally you know there are you know in the world in which we live today in the commerce in which we operate today you pay a deposit and then later you pay and later you pay and if you die before finishing all the installment of paying for that house or paying for that land if you die your children will take it up and keep continue to pay and continue to pay is tormentally our redemption is not paid for like that jesus did not pay a deposit of the price and now his children his followers his disciples will have to be paying all the installments you have nothing to pay i have nothing to pay everything has been paid in full for your redemption and so you are redeemed in jesus name look at psalm 49 we're reading from verse 6 in psalm 49 verse 6 they that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches in verse 7 it says none of them can by any means redeem his brother and thank God our redemption is not left in the hands of a brother, a sister, a pastor, a minister, a church leader, a church founder. Our redemption is totally in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. 
none of them can by any means redeem his brother no give to god a ransom for him look at verse 8 it says for the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceases forever that is after that redemption price had been paid that's all all your debts are cancelled all the requirements against you they are cancelled it is done it is sealed and it ceases forever now isaiah chapter 53 we're reading from verse 4 isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 here is the price the full price for full redemption and it's all been paid it says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted you understand because it was the lord that required that price to be paid it was the lord that chose his son to pay that price and it was the lord before the world began that sent his son and said this is what you will do and it was confirmed it was sealed it was a covenant between the father and the son that's why you have the word surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him streaking smitten of god and afflicted look at verse 5 it says but he was wounded not for himself for our transgression he was bruised not for himself for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes tell me were healed the whole price is paid christ has come and he has given himself fully completely without reservation is giving himself fully and completely for our redemption look at verse 6 it says i want you to notice at the beginning of this verse all and i want you to notice at the end of the verse all and between the bracket of all at the beginning all at the end everything has been paid for everyone has been paid for there is no one that cannot be saved a soul of tatsos can be saved the vilest of sinners can be saved the most wicked the most terrible can be saved all all look at this all we like sheep have gone astray all have sinned and come short of the glory of god we all of us have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him tell me the iniquity of us all and so if the devil wants you to doubt your salvation and he says do you think you of all people can be saved you came too late i'm saved already say i'm saved already he became your substitute to carry away and to bear away to take away all your sin the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all we're coming to number three now number three is the purpose of a full all round redemption the redemption you have is not a tickle of redemption it's not a small little redemption you know there are people that think i am saved my soul is saved my soul is redeemed but my body the devil is still in control never my feeling and my prospects everything concerning me all that is still in the hand of the world 
to oppress, to manipulate, to destroy. But I thank God, even if my body is ragged with pain, they are thinking about Job. And they are thinking about the time when Christ had not paid the price. But now, he has paid the full price. And because he has paid the full price, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are redeemed. From your soul to your spirit to your body, you are redeemed. From your mind to your thinking, every system, everything in you, the full price has been paid. And now we see the purpose of a full all-round redemption. What do you do? Acts chapter 3, we're reading from verse 19. Repent ye therefore. What does, what does that mean? You've been in the company of the ignorant, the people didn't know about redemption. They didn't know about the price Christ had paid. And because of that, they were living a powerless life. The power of the Redeemer is not in their lives. They were living a purposeless life. The purpose of the Redeemer had not been revealed to them. You were in their company. Repent means come out from among them. Your value, you are precious. And because you are precious, the Heavenly Father has given a great prize for you. You are now a man, a woman of purpose, a man, a woman of possession, a man, a woman of dynamic progress. Come out of them, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Calvary will have no meaning for those who have not repented calvary will have no impact on those who have not repented you want your sins to be blotted out and you want the power of sin to be broken and you want the purpose of redemption to be to take place in your life repent ye then repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing the times of refreshing that time has come time of refreshing you don't feel dry anymore and you don't feel weary anymore you are not fainting anymore and you are not like you are sweating and there's nothing to cool your system anymore the times of refreshing coming from the very presence of the lord the lord is watching anyone that repents anyone that is converted immediately all their sins are blotted out and then times of refreshing will start in their lives and then he tells us in verse 26 look at verse 26 he says unto you first unto you first have been raised up his son God and raised up his son Jesus God sent him to bless you with conversion comes blessing with redemption comes blessing with forgiveness comes blessing and then with freedom from sin comes blessing in turning everyone of you away from his iniquities it has happened look at hebrews hebrews chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 9 hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we'll see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crouch with glory and honor that he by the grace of God, he, by the grace of God, should taste death. Tell me, tell me, for every man, he has tasted your own death. He has carried your own death. He has suffered your own punishment. Look at verse 10, in verse 10, for it became him it befitted him it suited him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing tell me out aloud 
in bringing say it now it's there in your bible read it out in bringing many sons to glory many sons to glory when you are redeemed that was the act of god in bringing you out of gloom out of sorrow out of shame out of degradation and bringing you to glory so cancel it from your prayer oh lord i come to you i am no more than dust and ashes ah old covenant oh lord i come to you i am miserable ah before the cross oh lord i come to you what can i say i am worse than the worst of people that lived on the earth not after you are saved because now it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering and then he says in verse 11 as a result of that he says for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren because of the work of grace and because of redemption christ let me use uh, normal language that you should understand christ is happy and proud of you and he's not ashamed of you before the angels it says angels angels come look at a trophy for grace and look at what my death has done look at him look at her he is she is now a child of god is not ashamed to call you a brother a sister not ashamed to call us brethren all those evil things of the past our sins and the pollution and the power and the punishment and the very presence of sin he has cancelled from your life by redemption and so you can come to the presence of the lord now as if you never sinned in your life look at verse 14 in verse 14 it says for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself 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 likewise took part of the same that through death he might, he might destroy him that has the power of death that is the devil he might destroy him i thought if anyone already has died destroyed buried and after that a week he must i thought you forget but there are people in every meeting in every prayer the steel must bind the devil the steel must bind satan the steel must be talking to satan i thought when we're saved and we're now in the family of god we're talking to our father and we're talking to god our maker our redeemer our father who is in heaven i thought that as now we're redeemed we're not talking to satan anymore but people they start their prayer they say in jesus name they say oh father we come before you now and we're asking that you do this for your people and all the needs that are there you will meet and then they say satan uh, you will not have uh, the upper hand satan i reject uh, they, they've left god and god is waiting and now they are talking to satan and they talk and talk and talk and then they say oh god we thank you because of calvary and then they say satan you will not have victory over me what's the matter with you you're, you're in between 
exchange your opinions you are talking to god you are talking to satan but look at this jesus christ through his death destroyed him that had the power of death that he is the devil if he's dead if he's destroyed forget him he has no part in your life and he has no authority in your life the only authority he has is the authority you give him the only authority he has is the authority you recognize satan you have not stopped all right i will fast for seven days you are fasting for the devil you are not fasting for any your fasting does not make the redemption of christ any fuller any stronger already jesus christ on the cross of calvary he destroyed him that has the power of death he will not have one percentage of the power he used to have he will not have that power over you he will not have that power over me look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says and deliver them and deliver them what does that mean it means something has been holding you and then somebody comes and he takes you out of his hand if he only takes your spirit but your legs your feet your hands your eyes your ears your thoughts are still held by him you are not delivered yet when he delivers you thank god i am delivered thank god i am redeemed and when he has delivered you he takes you wholly completely he takes you out of the hand of the evil one you are no more under his bondage i am no more under his bondage and deliver them who through fear of death were in the past all their lifetime subject to bondage you're free let's look at point number three now point number three is uh, number three rather it's the purpose the purpose of a full all-round redemption the purpose of our all-round redemption that purpose has been fulfilled for your life for my life for his church for everyone it is done in jesus name point number two god bless you point number two the purchase and purging through his free redemption the purchase and purging through his free redemption it tells us in hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 12 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 12 is talking about what christ has done neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood by his own blood this one is greater than the blood of goats or sheep greater than the blood of any man on earth greater than the blood of angels if angels have blood greater than any other blood he says by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained what did he obtain eternal redemption for us for me he has obtained what kind of redemption eternal redemption for who for me is done it it will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name look at verse 15 in verse 15 it tells us and for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death is death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they 
which are called might receive the promise of tell me out aloud eternal inheritance three things we're looking at number one the purchase of the redeemed for himself number two the purging of the residents in his household number three the preparation of the righteous for heaven we're going there is preparing you now for that place and is preparing mansions for you a prepared person for a prepared place and when the time comes you'll be there number one the purchase of the redeemed for himself for himself my brother my sister you need to understand that when you were purchased you were purchased for him and that's why we say we're workers he has redeemed us he has purchased us he bought us out of the hand of the old owner and he purchased us for himself and we're no more part for him and part for the old owner you purchased a car and now you use that car all for yourself the one that had the car before you purchased it cannot come and say i have need of that car now i'll use it for some days and then i'll get back to you will be interchanging the use that's how some people position their lives they serve the lord on sunday and then the rest of the week they're serving the old owner but now when you are purchased he has you entirely and fully and completely for himself you will not serve any other power with your hand with your skill with your life anymore in jesus name the purchase of the redeemed for himself acts chapter 20 verse 28 take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of god that's what he has given you to do which he has purchased with his own blood he has purchased the church the redeemed the members of his body he has purchased everyone for himself and he tells you here is the work i give you to do now be careful be passionate be committed be purposeful and be zealous in feeding that church of god and you feed the church of god they will be stronger in jesus name isaiah chapter 43 we're reading from verse 21 isaiah chapter 43 verse 21 these people have i formed for myself for myself you are purchased you are saved you are rescued you are recovered you are restored for himself these people have i formed for myself they shall show forth my praise first peter chapter 2 verse 9 in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but she a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people look at this that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light no darkness in my life anymore he has chosen me 
he has selected me he has forgiven me he has redeemed me and now to show for the praises of the lord who has called me into his marvelous life number two number two is the purging of the residents in his household we have now come into his household and he purges us he cleanses us first john chapter one verse seven in first john chapter one verse seven if we walk in the light he is as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin i'm sure you've seen some advertisement before they're trying to sell a particular kind of detergent and then they show the picture they say this one will take away every stain and they say it's the best in town it's the most effective in town without mentioning the names of other kinds of detergents so they don't break the law of advertisement they still cleverly wisely tell you this is better than any of the cleansers detergents you ever used before and you switch over now the blood of jesus is the greatest cleanser that will make you clean and take every spot every stain every defilement all away at a go because now the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin if it has not happened it will happen totally completely complete cleansing in every life in jesus name hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 in hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power hold on christ upholds all things the stars the planets the galaxies all creation he upholds all things by the word of his power do you have any doubt then he will uphold the church by the word of his power there's nothing that defeated destroyed crushed satan made you that will weaken the hand of christ that he'll not be able to uphold his church he will uphold his church let no doubt ever cross your mind as to will the church stand in all that we see in the world today there's no doubt he has the power to uphold the church by the word of his power and now yourself he'll uphold you in that family he will uphold you i'm afraid i'm afraid what they are doing and what they are planning and what i'm hearing they say they will take me out of jesus and they will take jesus out of me why are you listening to false story they cannot do that who can take jesus jesus says here is my residence here is my house here is the person i choose and i'm going to abide in him nobody can take jesus out of you and nobody can take you out of jesus he will uphold you you'll come back the next time and you'll give testimony 
you said so you read it he has upheld me he will uphold you to the end in jesus name always remember satan does not have the final say in your life all those people they are threatening and bragging they do not have the final say in your life because he is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins and he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high that's our savior that's your savior and he will continue to uphold you to the very end as he has purged you in jesus name number three now number three is the preparation of the righteous for heaven you know everything we do as we study the bible is preparation as we have quiet time is preparation as we go out and we're witnessing is preparation as we're coming here so that we can be refreshed and renewed and revived and restored and redeemed it is preparation every step we take everything we do every day is preparation of the righteous for heaven and all this preparation you are making will not be in vain you will rejoice when you wear your crown when you get your reward when the lord says well done you have been faithful in a few things be a ruler over many things because of the preparation you have made you must get to heaven look at first peter chapter one we're reading from verse three first peter chapter one verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy overflowing mercy inexhaustible mercies he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead look at verse 4 it says to an inheritance he has redeemed us to an inheritance he has called us to an inheritance on the file that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you reserved in heaven for you are you there let me hear if you are there you know when they are making a party a feast and they invite people and they invite them by name by card and they have checked up they are coming then they will put names on the seat and they will say reserved reserved and when you come you are coming and when you come you are not going about looking for where to sit your name is there and the reservation is there wonderful god he knows your name he knows what you're doing he knows your faithfulness and he's told all of heaven and he said he mentioned your name what's your name there I said what's your name there okay that's the name God has mentioned and he puts your name there and then he puts your inheritance there and he says reserved an angel wants to sit there God says don't sit there reserved somebody a child of God has gone before you 
and then he doesn't know the order in heaven he wants to see that they say come up come up your place is over there this one is reserved for who i said for who you know the devil knowing that a good place wonderful place is reserved for you he wants to discourage you after all if even if the person who that thing is reserved for even if he does not get there satan cannot sit there because it's a place in heaven and he will not get to heaven but you will get to heaven and the inheritance it faded not away reserved in heaven for you you know some of the children their parents celebrate birthday and for them and their birthday is coming in a few days time and then something like sickness comes upon that child and the child is looking forward to the birthday because she knows all attention will be upon him upon her you know even children they have a way of rejecting that sickness they say no this coming day when every attention will be on me i will not allow any sickness to keep me away and i tell you they remain well they have the will to be well they remain well because of the day they're looking forward to when sickness comes my brother you don't have the chance to be sick sister you don't have the chance to be sick you're looking forward to that siege and to that place that is reserved for you you say i don't have time to be sick all i can do now is serving god and working for god i am aiming at that day and that time that thing that is reserved for me nothing will take it away from me in jesus name actually look at verse 5 look at verse, verse 5 who are kept by the power of God the power of God will keep you tomorrow the power of God will keep you for the rest of your life the power of God will keep you until you get to that reserve place the power of God will keep you in Jesus name who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time look at point three now point three is the promise and pursuit of a final redemption the promise and the pursuit of a final redemption you've got the initial redemption and then you're moving on now there's a daily redemption and then until the final day you will not fade out you will not fade on at the middle of the road you will get there i said you will get there don't look at anything surrounding don't look at what you left at home don't look at the bragging of the devil of the enemy beyond them in spite of them gloriously triumphantly you will get there in jesus name the promise and the pursuit of a final redemption there are three things we're looking at number one the path of the redeemed to the final redemption keep in the path stay on the road the path of the redeemed to the final redemption number two the performance of redemption by the faithful redeemer he will not fail you his promises will not fail in your life every day will be a glorious day of performance in jesus name number three the promise of restoration to full redemption let's look at number one number one the path 
of the redeemed to the final redemption. Isaiah chapter 35. We're looking at verse 8. Isaiah 35, verse 8. And an highway shall be there. On that highway, you will not meet with accident. On that highway, there will be no hill you cannot climb. On that highway, the strangers who are like lions, they will not be there to stop your onward journey in Jesus' name. And highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. What does that mean? It says the wayfaring men, those are the pilgrims, the people who are on that highway. Even though they are fools, what does that mean? They are fools in the wisdom of the world. They do not have all the maneuvering and all the strategies of the worldly wise people. They do not have all the cleverness of the worldly wise people. But it's not by your cleverness and it is not by your power. It is not by your ingenu ingenuity. It is the power and the wisdom of the resident Christ in you you will not err in the way of holiness you will not go astray in the way of holiness look at verse 9 it says in verse 9 no lion shall be there and you hear your amen as we are walking on the way those beastly people and those who have the nature of the lion and the pursuit of the lion and the roaring of the lion and the destructive power of the lion and they are watching for the people that are going on this highway and they say we will roar against them like a lion no lion shall be there in the path of duty no lion shall be there in the path of active service and higher service no lion shall be there in the path you are walking on now this narrow way that leads to heaven before you get to that point the lord will clear all lions out of your way in jesus name nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there we have the path all alone to ourselves we have that road all alone to ourselves and we have that narrow path that leads to heaven all alone by ourselves that trolling lion the devil will not stop your journey halfway in jesus name look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says and the ransom of the lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. It will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. What the Lord has ordained and the path he has chosen. We're going to keep walking on that highway of holiness. Nothing will push you down. Nothing will double cross your way. And nothing will stop you on the way in Jesus' name. The everlasting hands will be under you. Everlasting power will go before you. Everlasting protection will be behind you. On top, the cloudy pillar, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Thou great, the great Jehovah will keep on watching over your life in Jesus' name. 
Look at chapter 51 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 51, and we're reading from verse 11. Therefore, redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing. Songs of victory. Songs of triumph songs of joy and songs of the overcomer and everlasting joy what kind of joy are you going to have i said what kind of joy are you going to have everlasting joy shall be upon their head and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away from every one of us without exception in jesus name number two now number two is the performance of redemption by the faithful redeemer our redeemer is faithful and any sin that will contradict or stop your redemption, it'll wash away, blow away, knock away out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21. And I will deliver thee out of the hands of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hands of the terrible look at your amen. amen he will deliver me he will deliver me out of the hands of the wicked and so i'm not afraid then you are not afraid then anything he has committed to your hand to do you are not looking back as if there's a power behind you that is going to knock you nothing like that will happen you're not going to the seers and the visioners and the false prophets and let me know if there is something ahead of me that is going to break my leg and is going to stop me. Nothing will break your leg. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Look at chapter 31. Chapter 31. We're reading from verse 11. Chapter 31, verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and has ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. What's your name? I said, What's your name? Put it now in the place of Jacob. Read it yourself with that name. For the Lord has redeemed and ransomed him, ransomed her from the hand of him that was stronger than he. It has happened. As you believe, it is unto you according to your faith in Jesus' name. Therefore, this is why you can praise the Lord in Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, reading from verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Are you forgiven? How many of your iniquities are forgiven? All the iniquities and healers, all the diseases. Are you healed? How many of your diseases are healed? Look at verse 4. It says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Accident will not kill you. All the things that happened, they were going on the road, and this one fell on them. Nothing evil, the heavy load on the other side of the bridge will not fall on you. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Look at verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth? Where are you? You are satisfied in Jesus' name. 
who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles there'll be a performance in your life watch out watch out miracles are coming your way deliverance is coming your way strength coming your way a performance coming your way in jesus name jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 jeremiah chapter 1 we're looking at verse 12 then said the lord unto me thou hast seen well i will hasten my word to perform it i will hurry up my word to perform it no more delays in your life i said no more delays in your life no more setbacks in your life no more wondering i have prayed where is the answer the answer will be right there at the right time in jesus name thou as well seen i will hasten my word to perform it let's come to number three number three the promise of restoration to full redemption restoration to full redemption we're looking at some 130 some 130 verses 7 and 8 some 130 we're looking at verse 7 let israel hope in the lord for the lord for with the lord there is mercy and then with him is plenteous redemption look at verse 8 verse 8 and he shall redeem israel from all his iniquities and that's you that's me that's every one of us he will redeem israel from all his iniquities look at psalm 138 and we're reading from verses 1 and 2 psalm 138 verse 1 i will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods when i sing praise unto thee look at verse 2 I will worship before thy holy thy holy temple praise the, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness for that and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name all his word he has spoken to you he will magnify that word he will perform that word there'll be a performance in your life in jesus name look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says in the day the lord will perfect that which concerneth me where are you the lord will perfect that which concerns you the mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. You have redemption, it's available. You have redemption, it's all inclusive. You have redemption, it's all encompassing. You have redemption, it's all round. You have redemption, it's for today and for the rest of your life. And the performance of the promise of redemption in fullness, the Lord will perfect in your life and everything that concerns you, your spirit, your soul, your body, your ministry, your work, your soul winning, your family, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Are you there? Where are you? I saw pan with joy, with assurance, and with confidence, knowing that the Lord will perfect everything that concerns your redemption everything that concerns you that the lord will perform and perfect everything raise your voice to the lord and say lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you the promise is mine the promise is mine 
open your mouth and tell the Lord.